Hello, it's Mafia Recap speaking. Today, I will be giving a rundown of the movie A History of Violence, which was released in 2005. Please note that there will be spoilers in my review. Without further ado, let's dive into the film. In the opening scene, we meet two men, Leland Jones and William Billy Orser, leaving their room in a quiet motel located in a rural area in the USA Midwest. They seem like an odd pair of travel companions, with Leland being over 50 years old and Orser in his 20s. Leland informs Orser that he's going to check out of the motel. After some time, Leland returns from the motel office, where he had a problem with the maid, but he resolved it. He asks Orser for a drink, but they find that the jug is empty. Leland instructs Orser to go inside the motel office and fill it from their water cooler. Once inside the office, Orser discovers a shocking scene. There is a bloody handprint on the counter, and both the motel clerk and the housekeeper lie dead. A young girl, trembling with fear, opens the door between the office and the manager's residence. Without hesitation, Orser shushes her and coldly shoots her. In the following scene, we are introduced to Tom Stahl, the owner of a small diner in a typical middle American small town. Tom is married to Edie, who is an attorney, and they have two children, 16-year-old Jack and 10-year-old Sarah. The family is very loving and close-knit, and their diner is a place where everyone knows each other and addresses each other by their first names. We see Jack playing baseball at high school, and he impressively catches a fly ball, ending the game and getting Bobby Singer, a bully, out. In the locker room, Bobby tries to intimidate Jack into a fight, but Jack skillfully diffuses the situation with humor and wit, avoiding the confrontation. Later that night, Bobby and a friend, looking for trouble, come across Jack and his girlfriend, Judy Danvers, sitting on a corner smoking a joint. They decide to attack Jack, but their plan is interrupted when they almost collide with a pickup truck. The people in the truck give them intimidating looks, causing Bobby to back down quickly. Leland and Orser, observing the situation, warn Bobby and his friend that they are about to make a serious mistake. Orser expresses frustration with small towns like the one they're in. Shortly after, Leland and Orser enter Tom Stahl's diner just as it's closing. Leland calmly orders coffee and pie, but Tom informs them they're closed for the night. However, Leland demands coffee, and Tom, being diplomatic, agrees. He tells the waitress, Charlotte, to go home. As she tries to leave, Orser forces her to stay and gropes her. Tom suspects they want to rob the place and offers them all the cash in the register. Leland then pulls out a gun and asserts that the money is rightfully his, ordering Orser to kill Charlotte as a display of their seriousness. In a brave move, Tom throws a pot of hot coffee at Leland, causing him to drop the gun. Tom quickly retrieves the weapon, and Orser fires at him but misses. In self-defense, Tom shoots Orser three times, and he crashes through the door's window. Meanwhile, Leland attacks Tom and stabs him in the foot. Tom responds by shooting Leland in the head, killing him instantly. Despite the harrowing situation, Tom is hailed as a hero by the local media. However, he declines interviews and seeks medical attention for his minor injury, limping for a few days. A day or two later, three well-dressed men who are obviously not from the local area enter the cafe, which is bustling with well-wishers and customers. The man in charge, wearing a suit and dark sunglasses, repeatedly addresses Tom as Joey, insisting they know each other from Philly. However, Tom denies any connection, claiming they have mistaken him for someone else. The man seems convinced that he knows Tom, adding an air of mystery and intrigue to the encounter. Edie becomes increasingly irritated by the men's presence in the diner and insists they either order something or leave. The leader, however, hands Tom a $100 bill, claiming they are now paying customers. When Edie threatens to call the police, the men decide to leave. Later, the men find themselves pulled over by Sheriff Sam Carney on a rural road. Though the sheriff tries to assert his authority, the leader of the men remains unfazed and simply dismisses the situation, claiming they are tourists and encouraging the officer to keep up the good work. Sam visits Tom and Edie to discuss the incident, revealing that these men are connected to organized crime from the East Coast, particularly tied to an Irish-American crime family in Philadelphia led by Richard Ritchie Cusack. Although they initially referred to Tom as Joey Cusack, Sam couldn't find any criminal record on that name. However, he discovered a connection to Richie Cusack, implying that Tom may have some hidden ties to this criminal organization. Despite the sheriff's warning, the men continue to stalk Tom and his family. Tom becomes paranoid, believing he sees their car heading towards his house and grabbing his shotgun to defend his family, only to find no one there. Edie goes shopping at a local mall with their daughter, and during an encounter with Carl Fogarty, the leader of the men, he begins to subtly insinuate that Tom is not who he claims to be. Edie defends her husband, but Fogarty suggests she ask Tom about Richie Cusack and his alleged proficiency at killing people. Meanwhile, Jack, 
Tom's son, faces ongoing harassment from Bobby, and after reaching his breaking point, he brutally beats Bobby and puts him in the hospital. This reveals that both Tom and Jack are capable of serious violence when pushed to their limits. Back at home, Tom and Jack argue over the incident, and Jack provokes Tom by making a snide remark about his actions in shooting the two killers. In the heat of the moment, Tom slaps Jack, who storms out of the house. Later, Fogarty's car arrives at Tom's house, and they demand that he put down his shotgun and go with them. When Tom refuses, they present Jack, threatening him further. Fogarty asserts that he knows the truth about Tom and demands that he come with them to Philadelphia to see some people. Tom reluctantly complies and asks them to leave peacefully, but one of the men points a gun at Tom's head, leaving him with no other choice but to go with them. Edie witnesses the violent confrontation from the second-story window, seeing Tom use lethal force with his bare hands and the pistol. Fogarty shoots Tom in the shoulder, and when he stands over the wounded Tom, ready to deliver a fatal blow, Tom defiantly admits he should have killed Fogarty back in Philadelphia. In a surprising turn of events, Jack retrieves Tom's shotgun and kills Fogarty before he can pull the trigger. Tom's true identity as Joey Cusack, a former teenage mob hitman, is revealed when Edie confronts him tearfully at the hospital. Tom confesses that he used to kill people for both pleasure and money but left that life behind years ago when he became a new man, Tom Stahl. Despite the shocking revelation, Edie defends Tom when Sheriff Sam arrives to inquire further about Fogarty. She insists that the men who came for Tom were confident they had found the right person, indicating Tom's past connection to the mob. Edie's loyalty prompts Sam to leave without pressing the matter, though he remains suspicious. After Sam departs, Edie turns away from Tom in disgust and anger, but their emotions lead to a passionate and intense encounter in bed. Later that night, Tom receives a phone call from Richie himself, making an implied threat and demanding that Tom come to see him. At dawn, Tom leaves for Philadelphia, driving all day and night. Once there, he meets a young and rough-looking man in a bar. The man drives Tom to a grand mansion where he is warmly greeted by a well-dressed and confident man, Richie, who turns out to be Tom's brother. They engage in some small talk about Tom's new life before Richie delves into the considerable trouble and loss of status Joey's disappearance caused within the mob. Tom, no longer desiring any part in the mob life, sincerely asks Richie how he can make things right. In a chilling response, Richie calmly suggests that Tom could die. At that moment, the driver attempts to strangle Tom with a garrote, but Tom manages to counter the attack and takes out the driver and two other bodyguards using his combat skills. As the confrontation continues, Richie tries to shoot Tom but misses, leading to a dramatic chase outside. Tom kills the last bodyguard inside the house and locks Richie out. In a final confrontation, Tom shoots Richie in the head. Exhausted from the ordeal, Tom returns home after two days and finds his family gathered for dinner. Edie looks concerned and possibly praying, while their daughter Sarah sets a place for Tom at the table. Jack, visibly affected by recent events, remains silent. As Tom sits down, a sense of change is palpable between him and Edie, who sheds tears. They exchange glances, suggesting that their relationship has shifted, but there remains hope for them to overcome the challenges and remain together. That's all from the video. Thanks for your time. And take care.